A lot has been going on in the world recently in regards to physical security of your devices. Now, I don't necessarily mean keeping your devices from getting stolen while you are walking around your city or on a subway train, although those are matters of precaution too. I am talking about if your device is seized, how do you protect the accounts on that device, or if you have reason to believe a network that you are on is not safe, how do you keep your accounts from being hacked? So to coincide with the current security climate, let's discuss how we can use multiple YubiKeys to secure our accounts and a few ways to make hardware keys a little bit more convenient. Now, Yubico is sponsoring this video and I have built a whole series of videos explaining hardware security keys on my channel. If you are interested in upping your security game to the next level, ditching SMS-based 2FA codes, and increasing your defenses with keys that can protect you from advanced hacking attacks, then use my link for a discount off your next purchase of a YubiKey. If you are new to these little devices, these YubiKeys, today we are delving a little bit deeper into their uses. So I recommend checking out my playlist of videos on the subject to learn how they work. I got an email from Rylan who has a lot of really good logical questions and the answers will make security more convenient. Now I always say that security requires a lot of upfront time to set up, but in the long run, it can indeed be a lot more convenient. Rylan says, Hi Shannon, I ordered three YubiKey C and FC keys, those in particular look like this, about a week ago. I have them, but I have not set them up yet. After watching your videos, I now realize that Yubico offers a small one for a key ring and a small one for keeping inside the laptop at all times. My laptop will not leave my house. Now, Rylan is specifically talking about a couple of keys that might look like these ones. I have this one that can go on a keychain. This is a very small USB key. There is also this teeny tiny one from Yubico that fits right into the side of your laptop or your PC if you keep it at home and it's not necessarily something that you're going to take out and about. This is a really good option for a permanent setting because it's so tiny and you can't knock it out of your port. Rylan continues saying this will give me a total of five keys. My questions are, will I be able to set up all five keys to work or is there a limit to how many keys you can use with the same QR code? Is there a limit of how many separate keys you can set up per account? Email, exchanges, banking, etc. During setup, will I need to take each key, example using email, and take each of the five keys and set them all up for the same email account? Then whichever new additional accounts I set them up on, I would need to do this an additional five times every time I secure a new account. If so, that is a lot of setting up, but I want to do whatever is necessary to secure my accounts. Lastly, will I need to wait for the new ones to arrive and should I set all five keys up at the same time? Or can I set up the three NFC keys that I currently have and in a week set up the other two. I'm trying to determine if I'll have problems getting the two new ones to set up correctly if it's at a later date from the three that I have now from Rylan. So Rylan actually faces three main concerns here. How many keys will work with QR codes? Is there a limit per account? Do you need to set up all five keys on each account? And should you set them up all at once or can additional ones be added over time? So first, a refresher. There are three main ways that people use multi-factor or two-factor authentication to log into their accounts. SMS-based 2FA is the lowest of the low and is considered insecure because it is so easy to steal text messages. There are those six digit codes that are texted to you. That's SMS-based 2FA. Now, unfortunately, a lot of sites still use SMS-based 2FA. So they ask you what your phone number is. They'll send you a code to verify that you actually have that phone you enter it, and then your 2FA is set up. This is better than nothing, so if it's the only option you have, I would still use it. Then we have app-based authentication. This is the next level up. This allows an app to grab that six-digit code for you, and you download that app to your phone or your computer. Anytime you log in and a site requires a six-digit code, you copy the code from the Authenticator app to the website, or you just memorize it and then type it in. Codes expire after about a minute, so you have to type 
it in or paste it before it turns into a new code, which can be kind of annoying. Codes can also be stolen simply by looking at your screen, or if somebody has already hacked your computer and they can see the codes as you type them in. So again, it's not the top security option, but this is better than SMS. Apps can also be backed up to multiple phones, but this can create a vulnerability if your phone gets stolen or somebody clones your phone number. Now, if a hacker has already hacked into your computer remotely from someplace far away from you, they may already know your account credentials, so stealing a code would not be too hard for them to do. Now, the over 9,000 Super Saiyan mode. I'm sorry, I'm an anime nerd. Yes, I'm a weeb over here. What, 9,000? There's no way that can be right. This is using your hardware keys. Hardware keys can be used to unlock an authenticator app and gain access to codes, but some websites also support using hardware keys directly. Now, in that case, you would log in, the website asks you to plug in your YubiKey into your laptop or your cell phone. So you plug it in and then the website sees the key and it lets you in. This protocol doesn't require you to type in a six digit code, so there's no code to steal. Hardware keys can also be stolen too, but somebody would need to know what websites you've already set them up with, and they would also need to know your username and password for those websites in order to get access to the MFA prompt during the login. Now, if somebody hacked your computer remotely, chances are slim that they would also come around your house or wherever you are and steal your hardware key too. We also have the newest of the new, which is pass keys. These are still pretty new. These use a physical device like a hardware YubiKey or a phone to remove the password entirely, authenticating you with biometrics or a pin plus a physical device. Now, 2FA and MFA is not required every single time you log in because your current devices and networks are already recognized by the websites that you have accounts on. This creates convenience, and for top-notch security, you can usually require a code every time you log in or make it a requirement every time you close your browser, etc. Okay, so if you're finding this video helpful, a subscribe would mean so, so, so much to me. I just hit 134,000 subscribers. So yay, that was another little mini goal for me. Super exciting. Subscribing is a very simple way of showing me which videos on the channel you find helpful, you find valuable. It tells me which direction I should be taking my channel in. Uh, my channel is considered kind of small in the tech space. so any direction that I have from my viewers, it definitely helps. It's also completely free and it'll help you find more of my content. More of my content will actually show up in your YouTube app. Okay, so first let's go ahead and chat about those QR codes. Based on Ryland's mention of QR codes, I am assuming Ryland is planning to set up the YubiKeys with their YubiKey Authenticator app. If a website only supports sending your 2FA codes via an app versus actually allowing hardware keys, you can actually use the YubiKey app to protect your accounts with the hardware key. Sounds a little confusing, but I'll show you how it works. Now, this is because all of your 2FA six-digit codes can be protected with the Authenticator app, and then the app can only be unlocked with one of your keys. Here's how that works. First off, go over to your laptop or your phone or whatever. I'm gonna use a laptop because that's easiest for me to show on camera. So first, download the app for your phone or your PC. I actually found that setting up the YubiKeys on my PC was easiest too, so that's what I'm using here. When you plug in your YubiKey for the first time, you will need to start adding accounts. So go under accounts, and this is where you can set up your hardware key with a website's QR code by clicking on add account right here. Then you wanna open the website and navigate to that website's security settings. Now in my case, I'm gonna use Instagram for this example because it's a really easy walkthrough to show on camera. If they don't allow hardware keys technically, then you will probably see an option that says something like authentication app. Now click on that authentication app option. It might say 2FA app, it might say, enroll uh, an authenticator, something like that. Uh, it might say multi-factor authentication or two-factor authentication instead of 2FA. Just look for some kind of similar setting like that because every single website is gonna list it a little bit differently. 
which can also add to the confusion. Now click on that authentication app option and it should open a QR code on the screen. Now this code is usually used by an app on your phone to scan with a camera. The QR code tells the app on your phone that it should generate a six digit code for you. And these codes will change every single minute or so, which then forces you to type that code in before it expires whenever you're logging in for the first time on a new device or after your device hasn't logged into Instagram for a long time. You will notice those codes are not required every time you open an app or a website whenever you wanna log into Instagram, which is because the website already recognizes your device. The same thing can be said for YubiKeys. If you are opening Instagram every day on your phone or your PC, your device is gonna be recognized by Instagram and you're not gonna need to use the key every single day. Just whenever you are setting up a new phone or if you're logging in via a new network that isn't recognized, it might require you to plug in the YubiKey then. If you want more info on cookies, because yes, that's that's the way this works, is because of this fun thing called cookies, not not chewable cookies, but tech cookies, then check out my video about that subject linked down below. <laughs> now, that QR code is only going to show up once, one whole time, once. So screenshot it, save that QR code. So if you buy a new YubiKey in the future, you can always add new YubiKeys as ways to log into your Instagram account. Anyone can use that QR code to set up new YubiKeys though. So keep that QR code safe, keep it secret, keep it safe and sound offline somewhere. Don't save it on your like Google cloud or something like that. Don't share it with anybody, just save it offline. You could print it out and you could like stick it in a safe. <laughs> just save it offline somewhere. You could put it on a flash drive and then stick that flash drive somewhere safe and secure. Whatever you need to do, just don't share it with anybody else. Now your Yubico Authenticator app can scan the QR code, which adds those Instagram credentials into the application. So see how it says issuer of the QR code, account name and secret key. Those are all my Instagram account credentials. So you click save and now that account is saved to my key because my key has opened up this application. So from here, you can unplug the completed one and plug in another key, another YubiKey to add the same QR code. Just leave that QR code open. The Authenticator app will walk you through the same process for each other key. Just keep the QR code open on the Instagram page till you're finished with all of your keys. Once you are done in Instagram, click to the next page and use the six digit code that shows up in the Yubico Authenticator app to verify that 2FA is correctly set up on Instagram and you're done. Now, if you buy a new YubiKey in the future, after you have done this setup, just scan your backed up QR code, open it up on your flash drive or what have you, and just scan it with the camera to add your new YubiKey to Instagram and the Yubico Authenticator app using the same protocol. Now, if you lose your QR code, but you want to add a new key to Instagram, you will need to go back into those Instagram settings, let it recreate a brand new QR code for you to use and reset up all of your keys again. Yes, that is not convenient, but this is for security. Remember to save the backup codes that Instagram shows you after the setup. Those are crucial for a backup to ensure that you do not lose access to your account if you ever lose all of your different keys. Now, no matter which key you are using, you can plug it in to unlock the Authenticator app and get a six digit code for Instagram. And every single key is going to show you a different code, but they will all work. Now this workaround with a QR code works on however many keys you have. Now in the case of websites accepting hardware keys, where you don't have to do the whole workaround for a six digit code to type in, some sites only allow you to set up one hardware key. I know it's very unfortunate. While some like Gmail allow you to set up multiple. So this answer really depends on the site in question. You may find it easier to set up a bunch of YubiKeys using the Yubico Authenticator app or just doing one hardware key directly on the website and then using the Yubico Authenticator app setup as a backup 2FA option. Now the second part of this question, do you need to take each key and set them all up for an account? And each time you set up MFA on a new account, will you need to 
do this again for all of the keys, yes and yes. Each key is going to be treated as a different entity for each account, and each one is going to either be recognized as a separate key, or the Authenticator app is going to spit out different six-digit codes for each key. So unless you are planning to use different keys for different sites, then yes, you would want to set up each key using this same exact routine. This is where the setup can take a while, but once you are done, unless you buy a new key sometime in the future, you don't really have to do it again. And like Rylan, if you have a lot of keys, then that will keep them accessible and convenient to you so you won't have to go fishing around trying to find a hardware key when you need it most. Now my setup is similar to Rylan's. I don't have that many keys that I'm actually using on a day-to-day -day basis for all of my accounts, but I do have several keys. I have two keys that are set up everywhere that I can set them up. The demo keys that you see here, that you see me using in my videos, are not the same ones that I actually use in my real life for security purposes. My main Yubi keys are going to be a USB-C NFC key for Android devices and an older USB 2.0 key that works on laptops and PCs that might not be upgraded to USB-C yet. I can use these keys anywhere with compatible ports, so this is most convenient for me. Lastly, should you wait to set up the keys till you have them all, will you have problems setting up new ones if you already set up your older ones? ones. Now, if you haven't set up any keys yet on any sites, then just wait for the new ones to come in and have a security Saturday where you just go through all of your online accounts and set them up one by one. It is fastest to go through each and every single website and do this on a website by website basis, opening that QR code once, saving it and scanning and authenticating the code to each of your keys, and then going to the next site and doing the same thing. If you just set up MFA on a few sites with your first YubiKey, then it wouldn't be hard to just add the new ones and spend a day upping your security online via all your accounts. Now, if you did not save the QR code for any sites that don't support hardware keys directly, then I would recommend just starting fresh and resetting up each key for each site. If you have already set up your original YubiKey on a whole slew of sites, hopefully you kept the QR codes for sites that don't support hardware keys. But if you did not, you will have to start fresh. For sites that do accept hardware keys directly, you should just be able to add the new one to each site if they allow you to add multiple keys. If they don't, you can usually add new keys as secondary keys that are used via the Yubico Authenticator app, so kind of a workaround there. Google accounts do allow you to do this, so if you don't have access to your primary key for some reason for hardware authentication, you can choose to log in a different way. There is usually an option right below the login screen and choose a six digit code that comes from the application that you opened. Now you are always welcome to send me an email or comment below if you have further questions about using hardware keys or just security and privacy in general. I'm always happy to help there too. Thank you again so much to Yubico for sponsoring this video and do not forget to use my link to snag a discount off your next purchase. Remember two is one, one is none. Always have a backup. I'll see you next time. Bye y'all.